record. Okay, so for your final exam, it's going to cover chapter six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. But we have a total of 12 chapters, right, for this semester. So the other two, this will be for your finals. Your finals will be 30%. And this one, each chapter will have, I mean, like for one, for each chapter, there is going to be one question. Okay, so each chapter, you will get one question. Like one question is not like just one. Like one question, ada anak-anak dia. Macam biasa, A, B, C. And one question will have like a total of 10 marks. Um, I did slight change, uh, slight differences, much like eight or nine, to make everything um, fifty percent good. Because I got all that you. But uh, each is ten marks, so maybe this will be fifty marks in total, and this fifty marks will carry thirty percent. Okay. Yes. What do you want? Don't eat too much candy. Yeah. Don't eat too much candy. Thank you, food. Mm, okay. Uh, plan can plan can. Okay, first two, um, your chapter 11 and 12 will be your quiz. This quiz will have 20 questions, MCQ, and this will be on week 18, if I'm not mistaken. I will double confirm all of this information. There will be a memo, so everything I can uh, written in black and white lah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just giving you like a heads up. Quite right. Mm -hmm. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This will be on your finals. 11, 12 is your quiz. It is MCQ week 18. It is open book. Open book bukan bermaksud lagi senang eh. Open book means that uh, your level of understanding, um, it means that you can't memorize stuff lah. Uh, selalunya kalau soalan yang tak open book, we sometimes question you on things that we want you to memorize. For example, definition because we're expecting you to not open the book, right? So soalan macam tu jadi senang sikit lah. But when it's open book, it means that we're not going to question you on definitions but we're going to question you on your uh, conceptual understanding. Okay, conceptual understanding. So please do not... Do not try to memorize, but try to understand. There's no memorization point. You just have to need, you just need to understand what's going on in these two chapters. Okay, of course, for the rest of the chapters as well. Okay, so what else uh, did I want to talk about? The final exam, mm, quiz. We still have web assign for, for your self-study and also as an assignment. Uh, web assign yang tinggal, chapter 8, 9, 10. I don't think I will be given web assign on chapter 11 and 12, but we'll, we'll, we'll think about it. Maybe I will assign chapter 11 and 12 for revision, but not for web assign. So these are going to be part of your 10% carry mark uh, from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, semua tu lah. Sebelum-sebelum tu sampai chapter 10, that's your 10% carry mark. Okay, so your quiz, quiz berapa hari tu? Tak ingat. Saya tak ingat berapa persen tapi final 30 persen. Berapa persen carry mark total daripada awal sampai habis 10 persen. And quiz ni let me double confirm with you guys and of course the memo is coming so don't worry about that. Okay. Mm, so we're going to start on chapter 9. I'm going to do a little bit fast sebab kita nak catch up a lot of chapters in these three weeks. Okay so for chapter 9. Oh sorry. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Letak soalan. So everyone's okay? Okay, everyone's clear. Okay. I hope I'm not muting you guys. Okay, tak. Okay, chapter 9 is about SHM. SHM is simple harmonic motion and waves. So for this chapter, we're going we're gonna to talk about simple harmonic motion as SHM and then the simple harmonic motion of spring mass system. And then we're going to talk about mechanical waves, wave propagation and also wave equations. So this chapter has a lot of equations. I hope everyone can pay attention. Kalau tak faham, terus tanya, okay? Because uh, it's a little bit confusing. Okay, so for this chapter, explain and solve problems on SHM, explain mechanical waves, wave propagation in medium, use the wave equation. So we've 
learn from early on semester up until now, we've been talking about motion. We talked about uh, 2D motion. We talked about um, to, kinematics, describing the motion. And then we talked about uh, Newton's law, which is also describing motion. And then we talked about linear motion, translational motion, rotational motion. Everything was about motion. So now, I pun kita belajar pasal circular rotation, right? Which is the motion of a rigid body. So now we're talking about oscillation. This is another type of motion. Oscillation means that an object vibrates or oscillates back and forth like this clock. So it is oscillating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It is going through the same path. So let's go. Let's go. So stay here, okay? Wait. Yeah. Later, later. Okay. So when an object oscillates back and forth in the same path, we call this as simple harmonic motion. So this is a, um this is an example of simple harmonic motion, and kita akan belajar banyak lagi types of different of simple harmonic motion. Okay, so objects vibrates or oscillates back and forth over the same path and also the same distance, each cycle taking the same amount of time. It is supposed to be repetitive. It is supposed to go over the same path. It is supposed to go over the same length. Atau samalah, path dengan length kan. So the time taken should be constant for one cycle, one path. Time taken to complete one cycle, whoops, one cycle is constant. Okay, and then it is oscillation over same path or distance. So this is simple harmonic motion. We are not in the ideal world. We know that when something oscillates, it will Lama-lama dia akan uh, try, it will slow down or and then it will stop, right? But for simple harmonic motion, we are expecting it to go like this, ideally, non-stop. So this is simple harmonic motion. But in the real world, simple harmonic motion ni, of course, akan ada like resistance, um, friction, stuff like that, that will cause it to slow down and then eventually stop, right? But in this case, we are assuming the ideal case. And this is another example of simple harmonic motion. First one was the clock. Now it's a spring mass system. Okay, spring mass system. This is a spring, this guy over here, and this is your mass. A mass is hooked on a spring. It's called a spring mass system. A spring mass system has um, goes through simple harmonic motion. It goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It goes over the same path. It takes the same amount of time to go over that path. Therefore, it is a going undergoing simple harmonic motion. And the same case for this guy over here, we have a spring and also a mass, but this time, this guy has mg going down here. So f net dia ada ke bawah. Tadi mg kat sini kan? And the dis displacement is this way. This time, the displacement and also the mg, the f net is the same direction. So, equation the line sikit, but it is still undergoing simple harmonic motion. When you tarik dia and you let go, it goes up and up and down, up and down, up and down. Assuming that there's no, uh, there's nothing slowing it down, it will go like that um, for an infinite, infinite amount of time. So, it goes over the same path or distance and it, it takes the same time to go over one cycle. So that is your simple harmonic motion. So kita tengok tiga example, spring mass system, either the horizontal spring mass system or the vertical spring mass system or like a pendulum, which is was the clock, right? Okay, so now I'm trying to relate uniform circular motion with simple harmonic motion. In uniform circular motion, we described one cycle as having the period t right one cycle one cycle or one round has a period the time taken to complete one cycle is called period 
okay, to complete one cycle. And one cycle is 2 pi radians. And then we also talked about omega. Omega is the change in displacement over the change in time. I'm saying this without using the word angular. I should use angular. Angular speed is equal to angular displacement over the change in time. So this gives you your omega, angular velocity or angular speed. Your theta is your angular displacement. Your time is just time. So these are the terms that we use to describe rotation, right? Apa lagi? We also talked about alpha. Alpha is acceleration. It is the change in omega or the change in angular speed over the change in time. Now, if you don't want to memorize this, I told you you could memorize the linear um, terms, which was V equals to change in displacement over the change in time. Let me use a different color for that. V is change in displacement over the change in time. And also A is change in velocity over the change in time. So you could just flip the signs into angular. Flip the signs into angular. They have the same name. Kena tambah angular je. So displacement, this is angular displacement. Velocity, this is angular velocity. This is acceleration, this is angular acceleration. This is velocity, this is angular velocity. So these were the things that we talked about when we were describing a rotation. Now I want to relate this to simple harmonic motion. So let's take a look on the diagram on your right over here. Let me make it bigger. Okay, kalau soalan, please interrupt me. Eh? Okay, so this is a lamp and um, I'm shining it over this disc. This disc is clear which means that um, if I put an object, it will cast a shadow down here. I have this, um, what do you call this, rod and a ball, and this is light. So the, when the light shines on the ball, it will cast a shadow down here. Okay, so everyone understands the system. Okay, now if this ball rotates over, rotates makes a one complete cycle. What happens to the shadow? So it will go like this. Mula-mula kat sini kan? Okay, let me do this in slow motion. Cik tak dah slow motion pun. This is like basically stop motion animation. Um, okay, so first it was over here. So your shadow was here. And then when you, when it, when it rotates, it goes over here. Let's say it over here. And the shadow is going to be over here. And then when it continues its rotation over here, the shadow is going to be over here. So daripada sini, it traveled this way. And then it continues its rotation to over here. It goes back. Nampak tak shadow dia patah balik. And then when it completes one cycle, it goes back to the initial point. Now, it looks similar, right? It goes back to its initial point to complete one cycle. Okay, I'm going to repeat myself here. Please pay attention. To complete one cycle, in terms of rotation, we go from this point, it might go besar gila. Sorry, sorry. Okay, we go from here, the initial position. We move until we go back to our initial position. This is one cycle. The cycle can happen anywhere. You can start from here. I'm expecting you to go back over here. That's your one cycle. You can start from here, go back to here, one cycle. So it doesn't really matter where you start, but since we are starting from here, we are completing one cycle when we go back to here. I'm trying to relate this to simple harmonic motion. So when I started my motion, when I started my motion over here, and I went over here and I went over here. This is my one cycle. I have to go and then go back to my initial position to make one cycle. And this is achieved in a period of T. So if I, if I wanted to say, hey, I want this system to move for four cycles, four cycles, huh? so four T, right? So what needs to happen is we need to do this four times. Okay, one, this is not one, this is one. 
one cycle, two cycle, three cycle, four cycle. Effort lah, effort eh, nak achieve simple harmonic motion ni because you have to complete one cycle. Macam mana kita nak imagine one cycle tu, you have to go back to its initial position. So let's go back to your pendulum clock. So if you're got if we wanted to say one cycle or one simple harmonic motion, right? If we start from here, it has to go here and then it has to go back. This is one cycle. Okay, so that is your one cycle. So I'm just trying to relate to uh, the rotational motion and the shadow is simple harmonic motion. Is the rotational movement of this ball simple harmonic motion? No, it's rotation. But but the shadow is simple harmonic motion. Shadow dia just simple harmonic motion. Eh? This thing tak. Okay, so now uh, we talked about the period and also the cycle. Now let's talk about um, apa nama dia? Uh, radius. So for your, let me make this bigger. For your rotation, we have R, can we have R. In simple harmonic motion, we call this as amplitude. We call this as amplitude. We call this as amplitude, or we note it, denote it as capital A. So I make, if I move over here, how do I see this? Um, I move the ball from here to here, it means that I am moving the ball by displacement A. And then I move over here, I'm moving the ball by displacement 2A. Then I go back, sama lah. So basically the size of the radius is your amplitude lah. This is what I'm trying to say here. Benda lain tu macam confusing je. Okay, so your radius is amplitude. Okay, apa lagi? Omega is the speed to complete one cycle. So, let's finish it with me. Omega, omega, mana? Tadi. Okay, omega the introduce kemudian kot. Okay, so the amplitude A is the maximum position of the object relative to its equilibrium position. So, your equilibrium position will be kat tengah-tengah ni. So, this is positive A. This is negative A. But the overall displacement is 2A lah. Okay, if you're talking about magnitude, it is 2A. But if you're talking about the, the position with respect to the equilibrium, to the right is positive A, to the left is negative A. Now, have we seen this somewhere? We have. We have seen this in spring mass system. Let me remind you. So this is your um, wall, and this is your spring, and this is your spring mass. And you started at equilibrium. Saya pun tak tahu kenapa. Saya cik pakai marker besar gerabak ni kejap. Hmm. This is your equilibrium position. And if you were going to the right, you would have positive x. If you're going to the left or you were compressing your string, a string but a spring, compression, this is going to give you negative x. Ingat tak? So this is stretching. And this is compressing. And this is x equals to 0. It is the same case over here, except your x is now a. Your x is now a. And a refers to the maximum, maximum x. a is actually maximum x or maximum displacement. Okay, now let's take a look balik dekat tempat ni. Okay, I told you A is amplitude and amplitude is equal to the radius if we're talking about in terms of rotational motion. But A, when we're talking about spring mass system, A refers to the maximum displacement. So A is your maximum displacement with respect to the equilibrium whereby this is x equals to zero and this is going to be x equals to A. This is the x maximum. And this will be your x minimum. Minus A. 
Okay, saya baru introduce ya. Don't worry, we're not doing anything yet. Baru introduce in terms terms ni. Let me write this nicely. Okay, this is x. Kenapa besar lagi? X minimum, x zero, x maximum. A minus A zero. Okay. So apa yang kita dah cakap so far? We we've talked about um, displacement, amplitude. Amplitude kalau kita nak relate balik kepada rotational motion, it is equal as radius. We can imagine it like that. When we're talking about one cycle, it means that it has to go back to its initial position. Just like rotational motion, we start from here, we go back to the initial position. When we, if we start from here, we need to go back to the initial position. If we start from zero, we go here, we go here, we go here. Go back to zero. So it has to go back to its initial position. And the period is T, the time taken to complete one cycle. Sama juga, this is one cycle. The time taken is T, one cycle down here. The time taken is also T. One cycle is, uh, the time taken to complete one cycle is period. Okay. So now we know that period is interchangeable with frequency. So 1 over t is equal to f, right? And since period is seconds, is in seconds, so frequency is actually cycles per seconds. This is cycle, sorry, this is the time taken for one cycle, right? Let's say to complete one cycle, it takes you 10 seconds. So this is 10, 1 over 10. This cycle goes over here. So... This is 1 over 10 is 0 0.1. So your answer would be F equals to 0 0.1 cycles per second. Okay, I'm going to repeat myself here. The period to complete one cycle is 10 seconds. Contoh, eh? Contoh, example. So 1 over 10 seconds per cycle. T is 10 seconds per cycle. I put this into my equation, 1 over t. So this seconds goes down here. Your cycle goes up here. So frequency is actually 0 0.1 cycles per second. Dia terbalik dengan t. So t is seconds per cycle. Frequency is cycles per second or CPS. Okay. So you only achieve 0 0.1 of the cycle in one second. So to complete one cycle, you have to times this by 10. So you would need 10 seconds to complete one cycle. Okay, I, I think I'm confusing you. But this is uh, how you change the frequency to uh, period and period to frequency. Yeah? You just, the unit is seconds per cycle for period, ataupun just seconds, and then you have your frequency, which is which can be per second or to be safe, just you can call it as cycles per second. I think it makes more sense to call it cycles per second. Okay, so we talk about angular frequency now. Baru kita introduce balik in, uh, angular frequency. So angular frequency is 2 pi, 2 pi, one complete cycle, one complete cycle divided by the time taken to complete one cycle. So this is 2 pi over t, period. If we're talking in terms of um, <clears throat> in terms of its equation, we talked about omega as change in displacement over the change in time. But since we're talking about complete cycle, change in omega for it to be complete cycle, it is two pi. Change in time for it to be one complete cycle, it is t. So two pi over t, or you can say omega is equal to two pi f. The unit is radians per second. This is radians and this is second. Ni kita dah belajar. So, ulang balik je. So, okay. So, it is, it is the same thing over here. It, you complete one cycle over T. You complete one cycle over T. It is the same. So, if you start from here, you need to go here, you need to go here. Let's say the distance is 20 meter. The time taken to complete 20 meter is 10 seconds. So that is your uh, angular speed. Yeah. Angular speed. Sorry, you don't use meter, you use 
uh, radians. Tak apa-apa, nanti kita akan cakap pasal dia punya graph. Okay, I don't want to confuse you yet. Okay, so angular speed is omega equals to theta over t. And then we have equations for displacement. Sekarang kita baru cakap pasal displacement. Okay, so everyone, please pay attention. I know it's confusing, but please bear with me first. Nanti kita akan go over lagi. Okay, so angular speed is omega equals to theta over t. Okay, now when we're talking about displacement for simple harmonic motion, it is equal to y equals to a sine theta. And for x is a cosine theta. Where did this equation come from? So looking at this diagram, this circle, this is your theta over here, okay? I want to know what is x. I want to know what is x. So x in terms of a is just cosine theta, a cosine theta. Okay, kalau saya nak cerita cosine theta is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse, a, a. Okay, cosine theta is adjacent adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is my theta adjacent over hypotenuse gives me x over a. So if I wanted my subject to be x, it would become a cosine theta. So this is how we get the equation x equals to a cosine theta for simple harmonic motion. Sama juga untuk y. Y displacement is how much is this ball traveling upwards or downwards? When we're talking about <coughs> x displacement, we're talking about the ball traveling to the right or traveling to the left. So, kalau nak cakap pasal y displacement, sama juga, sine theta, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, let's take a look at the theta. Opposite is y, hypotenuse is a. So if I wanted my y to be my subject because I want to know what is the displacement, y equals to a sine theta. So these are the two equations for simple harmonic motion untuk determine displacement. Displacement apa exactly? When we talk about the ball, the ball was moving this way and this way and this way. Dia ada pergerakan dalam y axis. Dia juga ada pergerakan dalam x axis, ke kiri, ke kanan dan juga ke atas, ke bawah. Okay, so this is the displacement we're talking about. So I can actually quantify ataupun I can actually describe this displacement of the ball in its y axis by this equation. Y equals to A sine theta. And I can also describe this, um, the displacement of the ball in the x axis as x equals to a cosine theta. And again, a is your amplitude. What is a? a is the maximum displacement. In this case, it is just your radius. And theta is your angular displacement. Okay, so we have these two equations now. So simple harmonic motion, uh, we talked about the displacement just now. We talked about its relation to circular motion whereby one cycle is rupa dia sama. Kita tengok balik sini. Okay, this is one cycle. It goes one, two. That's, sorry. It has to go back dua kali. Macam nak cakap? It has, go back, it has to go back dua kali lah. Satu, dua. So this is your one cycle. And it is the same as one rotation. So we talked about that. And we also talked about the displacement. So now we're going to talk about simple harmonic motion punya sinusoidal nature. Sinusoidal nature. And if you can already relate, or I don't know if you can, we already talked about sines and cosines here. We already talked about it. So it is already sinusoidal in nature. I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but it is sinusoidal in nature. Eh? So now we're going to try to figure this out. So this experiment shows the sinusoidal nature of simple harmonic motion. Just now I describe it in terms of equation. Now we're actually seeing this graph. We're actually seeing the uh, sine waves or cosine waves. So this is your spring mass system. 
spring mass system, remember, a simple harmonic motion has to go over the same path at the, and has exactly the same time for each cycle. Okay? So when we tarik and then it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, when we try to graph, when we try to plot its displacement with respect to time, when we try to plot, kenapa saya guna warna ni? Sekejap. When we try to plot its displacement, okay, with respect to time, this is what we get. This, is, this thing is moving with respect to time and we are mapping its y displacement going up and down going up and down we're actually mapping its y displacement over time so this experiment proves that simple harmonic motion is indeed sinusoidal in nature walaupun tak nampak tapi bila kita plot macam ni kita letak pencil kat tepi ni lepas tu dilukis memang nampak sinusoidal nature tu okay so the attached pen traces out sinusoidal motion so this is the graph for each displacement, displacement in the x and displacement in the y. Okay, so displacement in the x is a cosine theta or omega t. Your displacement in the y is a sine theta or omega t. So now they use omega t here because theta is basically boleh tukar-tukar dengan omega t, right? Because omega is theta over t, therefore theta can be replaced with omega t. So that is just what it is. You're replacing theta with omega t. And this is like the official rupa apa tu, equation ni lah, omega t eh, instead of theta. They use omega t because it's easier to, it's easier to use it in equations later on. Kita akan belajar. So, Instead of writing x equals to a cosine omega, you should write it as x equals to a cosine omega t. Tapi sebenarnya tak salah pun if you write it as omega. But you must know that theta is also equal to omega t. Later on, kita akan tahu kenapa lah. Okay. So now let's focus on this balik. So x is equal to a cosine omega t and you know that cosine will always start at 1 will always start at 1 at theta equals to 0. So when theta equals to 0, it will be at the maximum amplitude. Will be at the maximum amplitude. And for sine graphs, you know that when your sine theta is, sorry, when your theta is equal to 0, when your theta is equal to 0, you know that sine theta is equal to 0. So at time, oh sorry, at angle zero, at angle zero, your displacement is zero. At time zero or at angle zero, okay, ni benda alah ni zero, sine zero is zero. Cosine zero, cosine zero is one. One times A is just A. Okay, so this is how this graph looks. At time zero, it will be A. At time zero, it will be zero for a sine equation. This is just plotting the graph. What you need to remember is displacement in the X for a simple harmonic motion is A cosine theta or omega t. And the Y displacement is A sine theta or sine omega t. And then from here, you plot your graph. Plot, plotting is, I think it's okay kot, easy kot. Nanti kita akan buat example nanti. Okay, so since we have displacement, we will also have velocity. Hit it to break it to you guys, but we do. So displacement is x equals to a cosine omega t, which means that if we wanted to know what is velocity, we need to, in, we need to differentiate this with respect to t. So dx dt of this guy, differentiating x with respect to time will give me cosine akan tukar jadi minus sine. Sekejap, dx dt of cosine x 
is I shouldn't write it like this. I'm gonna write mathematically. Dx dt of cosine t. Ni saya tunjuk contoh je dulu ya. Eh. Dx dt of cosine t will give me minus sine t. Minus sine t. Okay. But since dalam equation ni ada omega t. Kena tukar. Okay. So this is dx dt of omega, cosine omega t. Okay. Omega t ni dalam kurungan. So kita tahu cosine, differentiating cosine will give me minus sine, right? Minus sine omega t. And then I have to differentiate semua benda yang ada kaitan dengan t. So dalam cosine ni ada t lagi. So I have to differentiate omega t with respect to t. Differentiating omega t with respect to t will give me omega. So I will get minus omega sine omega t. This is if I'm differentiating cosine omega t sahaja. Now let's look back at this equation. My equation has a cosine omega t. Differentiating cosine with respect to t will give me omega sine omega t. My sorry, minus omega sine omega t. A is just a constant so I just keep it in my equation. A ni dia constant so kalau kita, kita tak boleh differentiate lah. Kita biarkan je. Okay, so your velocity is now minus a omega sine omega t. And of course, we when we have velocity, we also have acceleration. So again, we're going to do this again. So differentiating sine with respect to t. Okay, let me do it over here. dx dt. Why am I, why am I teaching you guys math? I don't know. We can adjust juga. So dx dt is sine omega t. When we differentiate sine, we get cosine. There is no negative sign. It's just positive cosine omega t. What is the next step in differentiating this guy? Sama macam ni. Is this right? Differentiate dalam bracket. Differentiate apa? Differentiate, betul? Omega t. Omega t, betul. After differentiating sign, you have to differentiate omega t because semua yang berkaitan dengan t, semua yang berkaitan dengan t kena differentiate. Okay, kalau dia cakap dx d omega, then lain cerita lah. Kalau dia cakap dx d theta, lain cerita. So but now we're talking about t. So semua yang berkaitan dengan t kena differentiate. Okay, so now this would give me omega. Let me write this nicely. Omega, uh, cosine omega t. Okay, so kita go back to this one. I want to differentiate my velocity to make it acceleration. I want to differentiate this guy. This and this is constant, so I just leave it there. So we know that differentiating sine omega t will give me omega cosine omega t. Omega darab omega, omega squared minus a, you just leave it and then you have your cosine omega t. So it all started from the displacement equation, which is x equals to a cosine omega t. So now we're doing the same thing over here for y displacement, but I'm not going to teach you guys this one because I dah ajar tadi. So we're just going to apply it now. So y equals to a sine omega t. Differentiating sine omega t, what do I get? I get cosine omega t darab omega. So this becomes a omega cosine omega t. Okay, lepas kita dah differentiate. A is a constant, you just leave it there. You just put in this guy over here. Okay. Okay, so now we have a omega cosine omega t. I want to differentiate my velocity to get my acceleration for x in the x direction. For simple harmonic motion. So cosine differentiate dia akan dapat minus omega sine omega t darab dengan this guy over here these two are constants you just leave it darab dengan benda Allah ni so you get minus a omega squared sine omega t the end any questions so far 
Is everyone okay with the math? Okay. 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 Eh? All right. So, apa lagi? Kita nak recap ke nak teruskan? Sekejap eh. Saya tengok dulu. Okay, kita teruskan dulu. Nanti kita recap. Okay, so we are trying to plot uh, the sine function which is the x displacement of a simple harmonic motion. So, y equals to a sine theta. I told you theta is interchangeable with omega t. So, if you were plotting it in terms of omega. So, omega can be, sorry, omega pula. Uh, theta. Theta can be degrees or in radians. Can be degrees or in radians okay so if you were plotting it in terms of degrees it would be looking like this lah 180 degrees 360 degrees so this is going to be your one cycle from zero to 360 you're going back to the initial position one cycle then this is one cycle from here to here one cycle from here to here buruknya one cycle Okay, and it goes on. So this is if you're plotting it in terms of uh, degrees. When we're plotting it in terms of radians, which is, I think, easier. So you have uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and then 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, blah, blah, blah. And you know that 2 pi is equal to 1 cycle. So 1 cycle, 2 pi. 1 cycle, 2 pi. 1 cycle, 2 pi. I believe uh, plotting it in radians is easier. I don't know about you guys. And then we also can plot it in terms of omega t, which is still radians. So instead of um, using 2 pi, we can also write as t, which is equal to 2 pi, which is one cycle. So this is in terms of, this is in terms of period, lah. period t, seconds. Okay, so t dalam ni lah, t dalam equation ni. So period t in terms of in time in terms of seconds. So one cycle is one t, one cycle is one t, one cycle is one t, and it goes on and on and on and on because it doesn't ever stop because we are assuming ideal case. Sampai. I want. Okay, I don't want to say. It. Tapi hmm. sampai abang Jamil ha huh, tak tahu. Okay, so. T and then we have 2 pi, we have 360. These are all equal. These are all equal. Okay, so I hope it's clicking now. If it's not, it should. Revision. Eh? Okay, so now next graphical representation of SHM in terms of displacement, velocity, and also acceleration. So this is X. This is the displacement in the X, eh? and we know how to get from x to v from v to a we should know this already so now we're trying to compare compare these equations so this is x this is v and this is a the maximum value of these equations that they can sorry the maximum values of these equations since cosine can only go from 0 to 1 sine can only go from 0 to 1 so the maximum value of this equation is dependent on benda alam yang kat depan ni. Okay, so x maximum is a darab dengan 1. Cosine maximum is 1. x minimum, the, the minimum value that cosine can have is 0. So a times 0, this is just 0. So this is your x displacement maximum is amplitude. x displacement minimum is zero. And then, sorry, you also have, cosine also has minus one, forgot. Cosine also has minus one, minus one, okay, so. Minus one, cosine minus one, jangan eh? Lemak, lemak. Saya punya kaki terosak. Okay. Saya ada dua. Satu untuk museum, satu untuk pakai. Sekejap. Okay, so cosine, inverse cosine of minus one. Oh, ada. Saya tersilap. 
Okay, so the minimum value that cosine can achieve is minus 1. So sebenarnya 3. So minus 1, 0, 1. So if your cosine is 1, then x is A. If your cosine is 0, your x is 0. This is, I think this is x equilibrium. Uh, x at the mean, x at the equilibrium. Let's call it equilibrium first. And then we have x minimum, a minus 1, which is minus a. Okay, so this, the displacement of x can go from a to minus a. From a and then 0, and then minus a, 0, a. 0, minus a. So it goes from a to minus a. Kadang-kadang dia achieve zero, kadang-kadang dia minus A, kadang-kadang dia A. So it depends on this equation lah and the time that you're trying to find out. So let's say you pl plug in what is the displacement at P over 2. So you put it inside this guy. Eh, eh, eh. Okay, let me repeat my question. What is my X displacement when, sorry, at time P over 2? This guy, right? So we are expecting it to be minus A. Adakah betul? Let's see. So X is equal to A cosine omega T over 2. Now omega is 2 pi over T, right? So A cosine 2 pi over T, T over 2. So T cancels out. So you get A cosine 2 divided by 2. This is pi. Cosine pi or cosine 180 degrees is minus 1. I believe so. Cosine 180. Calculated in degrees, color radian pakai pi, you get minus 1. So A times minus 1 is minus A. So am I right? Of course I'm right. So it's minus A. Okay, so at time t over 2, you plug it into your equation, you get your minus A. So sama juga, if you plug in uh, T, let's say you should be getting A. Let's try it. So if I plug in X equals to A cosine omega and my time is at, kita nak cari yang ni kan, T. Okay, so I don't know how to do this but I know omega is 2 pi over T. So I'm going to expand it first. Is 2 pi over t times t. So t cancels out. So I'm left with a cosine 2 pi. Cosine 2 pi is 1. So the cosine of 2 pi is what? 360. 1. So this is a times 1, which is a. So that is your displacement and how you use the equation. Okay, now let's relate it to velocity. So at time zero, at time zero, when you plug in time zero over here, you know that you will be getting A. At time zero, sine of zero will give you zero. So V should be zero. This is cosine zero is equal to one. This is A. This is A. This is zero. And then when time is equal to zero, cosine of zero is one. So this is equal to 1, this is equal to 0, 1 times minus omega squared A, therefore your acceleration at time 0 should be minus omega squared times A, minus omega squared times A. Semua ni berlaku pada time 0. Okay, so these are how it is related to each other. At time 0, they all have a certain value depending on their equation. And again, tadi kita discover at t over 2, the value is minus a. At t over 2, velocity is 0. At t over 2, the value of acceleration is positive omega squared a. So money goes back to the equation. You don't have to memorize. You just have to know how to use the equation. Okay, so at t equals 0, t over 2, t, 3t over 2, and 2t, it is minus, sorry, x is equal to plus minus a. Nampak dapat ni maksimum juga, takpelah. Yeah, x is equal to 
plus minus a. Velocity is always zero at the maximum. And acceleration is a equals to plus minus, sorry, minus plus a omega squared. Kenapa dia punya simbol ni terbalik? Sebab bila positif kat sini a, sorry, when a is positive, acceleration is negative. When amplitude, oh sorry, when a is negative ataupun when x is negative a, acceleration is positive a omega squared. Dia terbalik lah dengan sign ni. So when, dia terbalik, dia terbalik. Okay. So. Why are you laughing, friend? Nah. No, 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 you, you sit outside, please. No, you sit outside. Okay. Um, where, where was I? At time t, semua ni berkait but based on their equation. Uh, okay, I think that's it for this slide. Okay, sama juga for this guy as well. At x equals to zero, tadi dia cakap pasal time kan? At time equals to zero, time equals to t over two, t blah blah blah. Now as they're talking about when x is equal to zero, when is the time? So when x is zero, displacement is zero, the time is at t over four, three t over four, and then five t over four. Sini. And then untuk equation V ataupun untuk graph V, when is V equals to zero? V equals to zero when T over two, T three, T three T over two, and then T kat sini, these points. Okay, uh, it's just telling you here to understand how the graph, what the graph is telling you lah basically. So this is X displacement with respect to time. This is velocity value. Okay, it can go from positive to negative. And this is over time. And then we have acceleration. Can go from omega squared A to minus omega squared A over time. Semua ni berkait dengan equation dia. Okay, for example ni, um, I'm going to give you guys a video. I've already done all the examples. You can, I'm going to share the link to you guys later on. Kita akan teruskan kita punya pembelajaran. Oh, kita dah buat saja. Kita buat sejam dah. Okay, so I'm going to give everyone a seven minute break. If you have any questions, you can ask me. If not, please take your break and come back. We're going to talk about conditions for simple harmonic motion and then spring mass system, blah, 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 all that stuff. Okay, seven minutes. So now it is 11.28. Come back at 11.35 a.m. Kalau soalan boleh tanya.
Ada apa dong, Bu? Okay, one minute left for break. Oh, that will be massive. Hello, I hope you guys are back. Let's continue. Okay, so I received a question. Uh, two questions actually. Do we need to memorize um, the displacement or the velocity and the acceleration equations? The answer is you can either memorize it or you can derive it based on the displacement equation. So, jawapannya memang kena ingat lah. Sebab nanti kena plot graph based on that equation. Okay. Ada soalan ke? Tak ada eh? Okay. So let me continue. Okay. 
Okay. So just now we talked about, let's do a little small recap, small mini, mini recap, small recap. So we talked about um, what is actually SHM. SHM has to take over, has to take place. Takes place over same path. Okay. And then it, it occurs, one cycle occurs at the same period. So the time taken for one period for one cycle is constant. We are assuming there's no friction, there's no dampening. So this is an ideal case. So it happens on and on and on infinite time. Time taken for one cycle is the same every time. Every cycle is the same time. And then simple harmonic motion can be described by equations a simple harmonic motion has x and also y displacement. This is x displacement. Okay, and then we also have y displacement. Okay, so kalau x displacement, we can assume macam spring mass system. We have the mass. The mass goes here and then it goes here and goes here and then goes here and on and on and on. It goes back and forth, back and forth. So that is a simple harmonic motion. And this spring mass system has its equilibrium position as well, right? So this is our equilibrium position. Let me draw in a different color. So let's assume this is the equilibrium position where x is equal to zero. And then when it is stretched, it achieves the maximum displacement, which is A. So stretch, it achieves maximum displacement. At this point, it is x equals to zero. There's no displacement. When it goes back, the displacement is minus a. And this scenario is described by an equation, which is x equals to a cosine theta or a cosine omega t. Okay, where theta is radians or degrees and omega t is when you're talking in terms of time because the t is two again. When you're talking in terms of time, you use this equation. Now, cosine can go from one, zero, minus one. So your equation can either be one, zero, minus one times with a. Sometimes it's not one. Sometimes it's 0 0.7. Cosine can be rubah. So sometimes it's 0 0.5. So depending on the time or depending on the angle. So this value changes with respect to time and also angle. Therefore, the displacement also changes. So kalau 0 0.7, taraplah dengan A dapat 0 0.7 A. Maksudnya sampai sini saja displacement dia. Kalau 0 0.5 times A, kat sini saja separuh daripada A. So this is... This equation describes the simple harmonic motion in terms of angle and also in terms of time. Now, this equation can also describe velocity for us. We don't have to pening kepala nak kira tengok gambar. We can just describe it mathematically. So, uh, kena memorize lah. If you don't want to memorize, you can derive. So, you have your V equation, which is, um, I don't remember, A minus a omega cosine omega t, and you have your acceleration, which is pandela derived. Eh? So, sama juga for your y displacement, you can describe your mass simple harmonic simple harmonic motion, contohnya pendulum yang ada mass. So, this is your x equals to zero. Sorry, this is your y equals to zero, which is at your equilibrium. And it, when you tarik dia, when you stretch your spring and you release it, it goes up and up and down, up and down, up and down. So it bounces back and forth from minus, sorry, positive A. No, we call this negative A. From negative A to positive A. Let me write it over here. Positive A minus A. And this is Y equals to zero. Okay, so it goes up and down, up and down. And again, we can also describe it mathematically, which is y equals to a sine theta or a sine omega t. The thing that you need to take note is this guy is a sine and this guy is a cosine. Okay. 
So do I have a question here? Doctor, kalau velocity bukan sign ke? Oh betul, sorry saya disilap. Betul, I forgot. We are deriving it. So it should be a sign minus a omega sine omega t. Okay, so same case here, you derive this to get your velocity and also your acceleration. You need to memorize if you can't derive, okay? So what else do we talk about? One cycle, we talked about uh, what is one cycle in simple harmonic motion. So if you are starting from zero, if you are starting from zero, you need to go here. Belum lagi, baru satu per empat. Then you go here, baru satu. Kita ada empat kali kan? Sorry, kita ada... Kalau saya pecahkan ikut A, kita ada empat A. So satu, dua, tiga, empat. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. Kita ada empat kali kita kena lalu A. So kalau kita start pada hujung. So kita bahagikan pada sini kan. Okay. Kita start pada hujung sini. So I have to go one, one A. Two A, three A, four A. I have to go through four A's to complete one cycle. But this is not, um, how do you say this? This is not formally described. One cycle is not formally described as 4A. Ni cara saya ingat lah. Sebab saya pun confused juga benda lah ni. So I I need to travel by four amplitudes to complete one cycle. That is your simple harmonic motion. Or you can just say it comes back to the initial position. Okay. Oh, I need to write that down. Comes back to initial position. Comes back. To initial position to complete one cycle, one cycle or dalam kurungan four A's according to Dr. Knight. Okay, this is not official. Okay, off record. Okay, so now we're going to talk about simple harmonic motion of horizontal spring. Uh, just now we talked about displacement, velocity and also acceleration. Now we're going to relate the angular speed of these things. Okay, so for a simple harmonic motion of a horizontal spring, the point where the spring is neither stretched or compressed is the equilibrium position. We know this. Uh, this is our equilibrium position, x equals to zero. It is neither stretched nor compressed. We're not doing anything. It's not feeling anything. So x is equal to zero. And then when it, it is compressed, it, it goes this way. We, this is F applied. Your F spring, I mean the F spring will oppose this. Sebab apa? It has that restoring force. If you guys still remember, a spring has restoring force. Let me write it here. Restoring force. Restoring. Salah je. Restrong but Restoring force. What does restoring force mean? It means that it always wants to go back to its equilibrium. It always wants to go back to equilibrium position. Okay, so how does this look like? If I'm compressing the spring, I feel like someone is pushing me back. I'm pushing it. Rasa macam, eh susah dah nak tolak benda ala ni because there is Fs. The force of the spring is also pushing against me. So saya rasa susah nak tolak. Bila saya tarik, saya rasa macam spring ni tarik balik. When I'm stretching it, it feels hard for me to stretch it because when I'm trying to stretch it over here, the Fs is this way. I'm applying Fp, F applied here, tarik. Fs is going the opposite way. If I'm doing F applied over here, this way, Fs has to go the other way. It's always opposing the displacement that I'm applying. It's always opposing the force that I'm applying and also the displacement of the spring. So this is called a restoring force. It always wants to go back to the equilibrium. Or I, the way I remember it, it always wants to go back to its home or it always wants to go back to its zero, okay? So those are the things. So we measure the displacement from the equilibrium point, just like amplitude. When it goes over here, we call this positive A. For a spring system, we call this as positive X. And when it goes down here, I mean to the other side, it is a minus A 
or a minus x. Sama. Simple harmonic motion, we describe it as a. For a spring, we just call it as x. When it is at the maximum, we call it maximum x or amplitude. Okay, so restoring force ni, this selalu ada negative sign in its equation and displacement. Restoring force always has a negative sign because it always wants to go back to its equilibrium position. That's why it has that negative and it is proportional to displacement. So this is the condition for simple harmonic motion. This force satisfy SHM condition where the force is proportional and opposite to displacement. The force is proportional and opposite to displacement. Okay, so this is the condition. Two conditions to be exact. One, number one is proportional and opposite to displacement. Okay. So what about simple harmonic motion of a vertical spring? Just now I already told you this guy is an SHM, but is it really an SHM? So kita kena prove lah. So at the equilibrium position, when it is not stretched or compressed, we're going to assume this is our equilibrium, x equal to zero. Sorry, it's y. y is equal to zero. This is the displacement. It's not doing anything. It's not being stretched or it's not being pushed upwards. So it's just not doing anything. It's chilling. So at this point, uh, we know that we know for a spring system, the energy can change from potential to kinetic. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. For a spring system, we know that the energy of a spring system can change from kinetic to potential. If you guys still remember, US. US and KE equals to initial energy ataupun total energy. And US initial plus KE initial must be equal to US final plus KE final. So this is what we learned in chapter 4. So they're trying to bring this here. They said that at the equilibrium position, US is equal to... Eh, sorry, sorry. Saya terbalik. It's telling us MG is equal to KX. Ni salah, salah, salah. Ni benda lain. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh my God. Silap equation. Sorry, eh. Okay. At the equilibrium position, MG is equal to KX squared. Sorry, KX naught. It's telling us that MG... Okay, mg ni, mg, force dia, sama dengan F spring. This is, this is A. So this is F G, right? Gravitational force. Gravitational force is equal to, benda lah ni, apa nama dia? Spring force. Spring force is Kx, right? So they are equal in magnitude. They are equal in magnitude when it is at the equilibrium position. This is specifically untuk vertical spring, eh? The mg is equal to this guy. That is why it's not moving. Kalau dia orang tak equal, akan bergerak lah. Because there is some net force. Now we're assuming the net force is zero. Net force is zero. Zero again. So, mg kena cancel out dengan... Mg has to be cancelled out with fs to make it zero. So, therefore, mg is equal to spring force. Okay. And from this equation... They said, okay, if there is a movement in this guy, if there is a movement in this spring mass system, vertical spring mass system, therefore you know that the F net is not equal to zero anymore and it is, is going to be equal to minus Kx plus mg. Minus Kx equals to plus mg. And we know that mg is equal to Kx naught. So dia ketak je balik dalam ni. Kx not so just factor out minus k so x equals to minus x not so here we have proved that this vertical spring mass system is a simple harmonic motion system because it is opposite and also proportional to the change in displacement the force is opposite and proportional to the change in displacement <clears throat> Excuse me. Yang ni kita panggil delta x lah. So it is proportional to the, it is opposite and also proportional to the change in displacement. Okay, kita nak prove je tak ada apa-apa pun kat sini. So 
both the horizontal and vertical spring are SHMs because of the force. The force is opposite and also proportional to displacement. Now, because of uh, we know that they are SHM, we can actually equate them together with the equation that we already know, which is y equals to a cosine a cosine uh, omega t, and then we have v is equal to minus a omega sine omega t, and then we have the a, eh, this is y, sorry, sorry, y, we're talking y x, 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 cosine omega t, omega t, this is x, okay, x equals to a cosine omega t, v equals to minus a omega sine omega t, and your a is minus a omega squared cosine omega t. Okay, omega t a, omega t a, sorry, a cosine omega t is the same as this guy, right? Cosine omega t, darab dengan a. So I can actually write it like this, a minus a, sorry, minus omega a cosine omega t is x. A cosine omega t omega squared. So I can actually write it A equals to minus omega squared x. Nampak tak? No, korang faham tak apa yang saya cakap ni? Okay, again, again. So x, okay. Let me write this nicely. So, cari space. So y tadi, sorry, x. X is equal to A cosine omega t, kan? V is equal to minus A omega sine omega t. A is minus A omega squared cosine cosine omega t. Macam mana saya tahu saya hafal. Lepas tu you can see that A darab cosine omega t is actually x. So I can substitute A and this guy as x. So what am I left with? I'm left with minus omega squared x. This is my acceleration. Now they're trying to they're trying to equate um, SHM pun equation f for SHM dengan f for a spring. So this is what's going to happen. So f SHM we know that a is minus omega squared x, right? And we know that F is equal to MA. So MA equals to minus KX. And we know that A is minus omega squared X. So this becomes minus M omega squared X equals to minus KX. So we have equated F of SHM to F spring. So why kita boleh equate ni? Because we have proven that the spring system, horizontal and also vertical, obeys the SHM law ataupun uh, obeys a SHM system. Okay, so we can equate them together. Therefore, from this equation, we get this guy, X cancels out. And then the negative sign cancels out, K over M, and then we are solving for omega. K over M, square root that, you get your equation over here. And since omega is interchangeable with uh, 2 pi f, because yes, it is, omega is also 2 pi f. So if I wanted to describe this in terms of frequency or in terms of period, I can do that as well. So here I have t, 2 pi over omega equals to 2 pi m over k, so on. You just have to tukar tukar sikit lah. Okay, you know that two, omega is equal to 2 pi f. From here, it is also equal to 2 pi over t. This is equal to square root of k over m. You just flip it around, you get your equations. Okay, so this is in your textbook, don't worry. I mean, your module and also your uh, ebook web designer. Eh? Uh, any questions about this equation? Do you have to derive it? No, you can just memorize this guy. No problem. Sama juga macam y. Uh, displacement, x displacement, velocity, acceleration, you can just memorize it. You don't have to derive it, but you need to know how to use the equation and how to plot uh, an equ that equation in terms of graph. Okay? 
So don't worry about deriving it. You can just memorize if you want. Okay. Moving on. Um, so this is the thing that I said US uh, NKE tadi tu. Tadi saya melalut ke sini. So we know that when we're talking about a spring system, kan? When we're talking about a spring system, this was back in chapter four, I think. Ay, what happened? Okay, so this is my mass spring system. And this is the equilibrium position, x equals to zero. And when I'm stretching it, I'm stretching it, it will stop momentarily. Remember we, did, we talked about this? I'm stretching it, it stops, I release it, it goes like maximum velocity. Di tengah, paling laju lah tu. So at this point, your Ke is equal to zero, but your potential energy of the spring is the maximum. Okay. And when you reach the equilibrium position, your Ke is maximum but your us is equal to zero and then when you are at this position maybe this is the compression part your ke when you go back to the paling jauh sekali it stops momentarily before it goes back to the equilibrium position right so your ke is actually zero over here and your us is also maximum okay remember us is equal to one over two kx squared so at the equilibrium position where x is equal to zero, your us is equal to zero. So that energy has to become ke. Semua energy dalam spring ni kena jadi ke. So ke maximum. But when ke is zero, all that energy has to become spring potential energy. So spring potential energy is maximum at this point and also at this point. So this is what we talked about last time. Now how does it relate to simple harmonic motion? Dia cakap kat sini. Kita still use conservation of energy and we are assuming there is no loss in energy. Therefore, the total mechanical energy is conserved. So based on this energy equation, we can also come up with our SHM equation. Kenapa lah? Tak tahulah kenapa dia nak buat macam tu kan? Tapi kita dah, dah ada, kita kena belajar. <laughs> so total energy is equal to kinetic plus potential E equals to 1 over 2 mv squared plus 1 over 2 kx squared. Like I told you before, if this guy is zero, this guy becomes maximum. Ke becomes maximum. If your Ke is zero, this guy becomes maximum because the energy is conserved. Energy has to become, it has to, ha it has to be constant. So kalau seorang tu berkurang, dia kena tambah kat orang lain. Okay, so when x when displacement is x equals to zero, therefore you know that your spring potential energy is equal to zero. Therefore, your V has to become maximum. So you get your maximum kinetic energy. When displacement x is equal to a or minus a, maximum displacement, velocity is equal to zero. Okay, so here your total energy is hundred percent. Kalau potential energy dua puluh peratus. Maksudnya kinetic energy kena 80%. Kalau kinetic kalau potential energy kosong, kosong eh. Therefore your kinetic energy has to be 100% sebab dia kena total dia kena sama dengan conserved energy. Sama juga kalau kinetic energy kosong, potential energy kena 100. Kalau kinetic energy 20, potential energy kena 80 supaya semua total adalah 100 because it has to be conserved. Okay, because of this, because the conservation of energy, we have another equation to remember, which is 1 over 2 Ka squared equals to 1 over 2 Mb maximum, maximum squared. How did we equate these two guys together? Because they are equal to 100% of energy. This is also equal to 100% of energy. Remember when displacement x equals to 0, your kinetic energy is maximum which is 100% of energy. When your displacement is x equals to a or minus a, your velocity is equal to zero. Sebab dia maksimum kan? So orang kena jadi kosong. So your energy becomes 1 over 2 Ka squared. This is your US max, 100%. Since we know that these two values are the same, we can equate them together. 1 over 2 Ka squared equals to 1 over 2 mv max squared. 
From here, we can solve for V max is equal to K over M times E. This is your second equation. This is omega K over M. V max is K over M times A. Sorry, square root of K over M times A. Tada. Tadi K over M. This one. Okay. Di macam, um, I think it's quite hard the way that it is derived. But you don't have to know how to derive it. You just have to use the equation correctly. So these are your two equations. This is number one and this is number two. Ni tak relate dengan yang x equals to and then v equals to a. Semua itulah. Eh? This is another equation. that You have to remember x equals to a cosine omega t blah blah blah. All that stuff. And this is for your spring mass system. In terms of omega and in terms of V maximum. So orang ada A. So orang tak ada A. Unknown. There's no unknown. It's kosong kat situ. Okay. So any questions so far? It's a lot of equation. I know. I I'm also struggling with it. Tak apa. Kita buat sama-sama eh. Kita slow-slow. Tak lah slow sangat. Tapi... Doctor. Yes. Um, kalau dia, dia bagi omega. Lepas tu kita hmm. disuruh cari velocity. Kita substitute je lah um, omega times A kan? Betul. Pandai. Betul. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Okay, so another equation that we can also write uh, for SHM and also energy uh, is we know that this is equal to energy. Kan? Kita tahu E equals to US plus KE. Yang ni tak ada siapa-siapa maksimum. Yang ni macam sukatilah seorang 20% ke, seorang 80% ke and so on so on, so forth. So we know this is the general equation for energy. We can also equate this to the maximum uh, US because this is maximum US. This is also equal to maximum KE. The value is the same 100%, 100%. 100%. So we can actually equate this to the US maximum, spring potential maximum energy. So this is another equation which gives us this gives us um, I bring this guy over here. Let me write that over there. 1 over 2 k a squared. I bring this over here minus 1 over 2 k x squared equals to 1 over 2 mv squared. So in my 1 over 2 ni boleh cancel out. And I have dua-dua ada k. I can't cancel that out. I have a squared x squared. And then I have m. So let me factor this out. a squared minus x squared. And this is mv squared. And I bring m over here. km. a squared minus x squared equals to v squared. So if I wanted to know what is V, square root of that, okay? Itu sahaja. Again, you don't have to memorize. You don't have to derive. If you don't if you don't want to derive, you need to memorize, okay? Kena give and take lah. So V equals to square root E to sila. M, M, M kejap. Say so square root can tadi. I brought this over over here and I square root. Kenapa benda lain tak square root? Jom. 1 over 2 kx squared minus 1 over 2 kx. Sorry, 1 over 2 ka squared minus 1 over 2 kx squared. 1 over 2 mv squared. Betul. 1 over 2 cancel out. K a squared kx squared. If I bring this m over here, becomes k over m. Ah, huh, that's weird. This is supposed to be square. This is supposed to be square root. Sorry. Kejap, eh. Kenapa saya salah tulis? A minute. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Oh, equation ni salah. So... Yeah, it's a bait check. It should be like this. Okay, ni ampaikan. Sejak kita pakai warna putih. Boleh tak hilangkan? Yeah, yeah, boleh hilang. Huh, 
tutup lah semula. Use a smaller pen. Okay, so this is the equation. Eh? I hope this is right, correct in your module book. This is dangerous if it's wrong. Chapter Salah Buku Chapter 9 Chapter 9 Betul tak? Equation dia That's weird. Okay, so tak ada. That is weird. Tak ada dekat page 122. Betul. Thank you. Page 122 dekat dekat equation 9.14. So, ada square root kat situ. But the square root does not extend... Aduh, dalam equate dalam buku dia tak extend sampai a squared minus x squared. Macam ni kan? Eh, eh datang balik ni. Eh, gendut lah benda lah ni. Okay, okay. So, dalam buku, it says V is equal to square root of K over M. Lepas tu square root dia tu tak extend sampai A squared minus X squared. But it should be. So, tolong betulkan dalam buku, it should be like this. So, V equals to K over M A squared minus X squared dalam kurungan. And then this is square root eh. Square root semua. Semua sekali square root. Okay, we, how did we get this um, from this equation? So, if you guys don't believe me, you can derive it. Daripada sini eh. So, it should be square root of the whole thing. So, ni ha. Padang balik ni. Kenapa yang tadi hilang? Okay. So, that is your equation. Please correct it in your book if you haven't. Takut nanti terhafal silap equation. I will notify my unit as well about this um, mistake. Hopefully everyone it takes note of it. Okay, moving on. So, what do we talk about just now? We talked about um, where energy is conserved for a simple harmonic motion, betul kan? And the general equation for energy is US plus Ke, which is 1 over 2 mv squared and also 1 over 2 kx squared. This, is, this can be equated to the maximum energy of a US or the maximum energy of Ke. So, in this case, they wanted to equate it with maximum energy of a spring. They can do that. So 1 over 2 k a squared equals to this guy and then they rearranged it to get this equation. This is V equals to k over m a squared minus x squared. What is x? x is your displacement of your spring. Remember we have x equals to a, x equals to 0, x equals to minus a or x equals to 0 0.1 a, tak kisahlah. The displacement back and forth. You know over here is a, this is minus a Nak tengah ni kosong. Okay, whatever value that it has, put it inside your equation. It will tell you what your velocity is. What is K? K is your spring constant. What is M? M is the mass of the spring mass system tu kan? Ha, mass tu lah. And then your A is the maximum displacement. Whatever this maximum displacement that that system can go. Okay, so let's say if your system can go up to 10 meters then you put in 10 meters. But the ball is over here. It's not at 10 meters. So your x is maybe at 3. So you put in 3. Depending on your question. You have to know what is the maximum displacement, which is A. You also have to know what is the displacement of that ball. That ball is currently having. And the spring mass, the spring constant, which is K, and the mass of the system. Selalunya kita akan abaikan mass of the spring. We just want, we just focus on the mass uh, object tu lah. Okay, so how is this different from the equation yang kita cakap pasal uh, omega is equal to square root over k, k over m and also 
V equals to K square root K over M times A. This is V maximum. It's different. Eh? V maximum is your maximum speed. This guy tells you speed in general whenever this guy is at a certain position, whenever the mass is at a certain position. Betul tak? Sebab kita tahu this is the maximum but this is the actual position. What if the actual position is at zero? We, kita, kita predict Kita predict dekat equilibrium KE maximum kan? Okay, let's try. <coughs> we predicted that KE is maximum. Okay, we have this. We have this. Um, this is X equals to zero. Kenapa saya buat macam ni? Silap. This is your spring system. And this is your mass. We said that at this point where X equals to A, the us is maximum and at this point x equals to minus a the us is also maximum us is equal to 1 over 2 kx squared so kalau x is a ataupun minus a dia akan jadi maximum ke akan jadi kosong at this point where x is equal to 0 us is equal to 0 therefore your ke has to be maximum untuk ke jadi maximum v pun kena maximum betul tak okay so now that we've established that at x equals to 0, ke kena maximum, us maximum over here, us maximum over here. Sorry for my bad handwriting. Kita nak laju. Okay, so again, ke is maximum at the equilibrium position, us is maximum at minus a and also a. So this is what we got so far. I want to know what is my V maximum from this equation, assuming that I don't want to use equation yang sebelum ni lah. So I want to use this guy, but I want to know at X equals to zero. So X equals to zero. Okay, so V is equal to square root KM times A squared minus zero. Okay. And then we have K over M A squared square root. So now I'm left with V is equal to square root K over M times A. This is the maximum V. Kenapa saya tahu dia maximum? Because at X equals to zero, KE is maximum. Therefore, if I substitute my X as zero, I would get my maximum V. This is if you want to use this equation lah. Your general equation. This is, if you don't want to use it, you can just memorize this equation. You will get the same answer. V max is equal to K over M times A. Sorry, this is square root. K over M times A. Square root K over M times A. Sama. It should be the same. Tak boleh lain lain. Okay, any questions so far? Did I make you more confused? I hope not. Okay, again, eh, your E should be conserved at all times. This is where your SHM punya equation ngarut-ngarut ni datang. Okay, from the conservation of energy. Okay, so we talked about horizontal spring mass system. We talked about vertical mass spring, spring mass system. We know that these two are spring, these two are simple harmonic motion. And from those spring mass system, just so spring mass system, SHM, kita discover that we have a bunch of equations which is omega equals to square root k over m. We have V maximum square root k over m times a. And we also have the general equation for V which is uh, k over m a squared minus x squared. Square root, sorry, a bracket, square root the whole thing. These are the three equations that we got for our spring mass system using, um, assuming that they are simple harmonic motion and we are applying conservation of energy. Next one, simple pendulum. So we talked about the condition for simple harmonic motion. There was two. The first one was it must be restoring force. Sorry, it, this is not the condition syllabus. It is a type of restoring force whereby it is opposite and also proportional.
to displacement. This is simple harmonic motion condition. Okay, which is a restoring force lah. This is the definition for a restoring force. So simple harmonic motion, dia suka restoring force sebab memang satisfy condition dia which is opposite and proportional to displacement. F equals to minus kx. Opposite and proportional to displacement. That was the example that we used. Now this guy is also opposite and also proportional to displacement. Bila saya tarik pendulum tu, dia akan nak pergi ke sana kan. Saya tarik je, saya lepas, dia nak pergi equilibrium. Saya tarik ke sini, saya lepas, dia nak pergi ke equilibrium. When it is at equilibrium, I'm not doing anything to anything to it, it is staying there. Sama macam spring my system. It looks different but both obeys the simple harmonic motion punya condition. So now because of that, we also have to try to make sense of how is it like simple harmonic motion? Sikit lagi, sikit lagi, I promise. <laughs> sikit lagi and then kita habiskan eh. Alright. So, um, so for the simple pendulum, the F net is equal to mg sine theta. Macam mana saya tahu? Because, let's go focus over here. Okay, so remember that you, for your spring mass system, if you are applying F applied this way, you would get F spring this way and it is equal to minus Kx. Tahu tak? Because tertarik je dia, dia nak pergi patah balik. Let's say now I am trying to swing it to the right. I'm trying to swing this pendulum to the right. I'm swinging it to the right. So I'm swinging it to the right. It wants to go back. So, macam mana dia go back? It goes back using gravity. But not exactly gravity, but its component. So, here, I'm swinging it this way. So, the restoring force of this dude untuk patah balik ke equilibrium is actually mg sin theta. mg sin theta is this way. This is mg. This is theta. Therefore, this is going to be mg cosine theta because it is touching the angle. This guy is not touching the angle. Therefore, it gets the sine. This is your mg sine theta. This is your mg sine theta. This is your mg cosine theta. This guy touches the angle. It gets the cosine. This guy is not touching the angle. It gets the sine. Now, we have established that uh, for this pendulum, the F restoring pendulum is minus, sorry, it's just mg sine theta. Sorry, it is minus, minus mg sine theta. That is the restoring force for a pendulum. The restoring force for a spring mass system is minus kx. Uh, tu perbezaan antara dua dia. Dua-dua adalah simple harmonic motion. Okay, so now that we know what is the restoring force in this guy, restoring force ni benda yang akan tarik dia balik ke equilibrium kan? So, from F net, we know that F net is equal to MA. So, cancel out M. I'm left with A as minus G sine theta. So, how does a pendulum maintain that simple harmonic motion? So, simple harmonic motion for a pendulum only applies when it is going over a small theta. Bila dia macam kecil-kecil eh, eh, je dia punya movement tu. Kalau dia besar, dia punya swing action tu besar, it's not necessarily a simple harmonic motion. I don't know why but condition dia macam tu eh. Bila dia kecil, okay this is simple harmonic motion. But when it's too big, it doesn't obey the simple harmonic motion. Don't ask me why, I don't know as well. So because of this law, not law, because of this uh, observation yang kita nampak eh. Kita nampak dia bila kecil je, dia obey simple harmonic motion. Tapi bila besar dia tak obey. So kita cakap, okay, so sine theta, when it is really small, it becomes theta. It is approximately the same as theta. So we can actually write acceleration as minus g sine theta. Sorry, minus g, um, minus g theta sebenarnya. Apa orang tulis ni? Kejap, kejap. Minus g sine theta, sine theta is L over S. 
Sekejap eh. Hmm, pakai nota saya je lah. Abaikan ni. Okay, so we know that A is minus G sin theta. Sin theta is equal to, kalau kita tengok kat sini, sin theta is soft, opposite over hypotenuse. Sin theta, this is your theta. Opposite is S, the movement on, at the circumference. Um, what do you call this? The movement, um, the arc displacement, the arc, eh? S is arc. And this is L, hypotenuse. So S over L is sine theta. Okay, so I can put this into my equation. Mg sine theta. Tadi kita dapat minus Mg sine theta kan? So sine theta is S over L. So I'm putting it inside here. And then I'm trying to, e trying to relate this to F net minus Kx. This is for spring mass system. And this is for pendulum. Please bear with me. I know this is like ridiculous right now. So this is pendulum and this is spring mass system. Sabar eh? So S is displacement kan? And spring mass system, displacement dia adalah X. So kita cakap okay, ni samalah. So in this case, your K is actually Mg over L. Okay, for your pendulum. So using this omega equals to square root of K over M, since K is Related to this guy mg over l, you get omega s g over l. So for a spring mass system, omega is square root k over m. For a simple pendulum, it is square root of g over l. Macam mana kita dapat? Macam tadi tu lah. Okay, I don't want to derive it again. Please memorize if you don't want to derive. So these are two different equations. They are both omega. Satu untuk spring mass system, dua-dua, horizontal and vertical. Omega equals to square root G over L is for your pendulum. What is L? L is the length of your string. G is just gravity. Okay, so it depends on your L. But, and tu je. Kalau kita punya pendulum ni, kita nak tahu di laju mana, tukar length of the string. That's how you change the omega. Yang benda lain dia tak kisah. Okay, so because you know what is omega, you should also know what is the period because omega is 2 pi f, which is equal to 2 pi over t. Okay, sikit lagi. Habis nak habis dah ni. I promise. Okay, so then after that, we know that simple harmonic motion is ideal, right? Kita tahu dia. No, 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 no. Tak, dia ideal infinite time, tak berubah, semua constant, semua yang bagus-bagus lah pasal dia. Tapi in ideal world, we know that this is not possible. So therefore, there is a term called damping. Damping of a simple harmonic motion system. Sorry, damping of an oscillator. Simple harmonic motion is ideal. Simple harmonic motion is oscillation. So dampening of an oscillator is what we see in the real world. And there are three types of dampening. One is under damped oscillator. One is critically damped oscillator and one is over. Satu critical, under critical, over. C is over. B is critical. And this is under. Under ni dia macam nari-nari sikit. Over ni dia paling tinggi, critical ni yang tengah-tengah lah. Do you have to know what they are? Not really. Just know the terms. Okay. Over damped, critical damping. Mm, under damping. Just try to differentiate between the three. Okay, habis. Now let's do recap. Recap, eh? Betul habis. Okay, so what have we learned? We learned a lot, I know. I'm so sorry for today's class. Memang banyak gila equation. So the first thing that we learned was what is SHM? We talked about this. SHM is when you move, when a system moves over the same path and takes the same time and it is ideal. It happens over an infinite amount of time. Same path, same length, same time for each cycle. Okay, we call this ideal, ideal case lah. And then we have damped oscillator, which is the opposite of a SHM because a damped oscillator either friction or resistance which makes them slow down and eventually stop. So that is our real world scenario. Damped oscillators, we have under damped, we have critical, 
and we have over damped. And then untuk SHM, we had three systems. The first one was spring mass system, horizontal. Okay, and then number two is spring mass system, vertical. And then the third one was simple pendulum. Now the simple harmonic motion obeys the conservation of energy, which means that your equation will be tied to energy jugalah. So from here, let me make this smaller. Group. Okay, so daripada sini, kita tahu we have like a bunch of equations. Oh, I forgot. Simple harmonic motion is, can be described in terms of displacement, velocity and also acceleration. X equals to A cosine omega T. V apa dia tak tahu. A apa and then Y apa. V apa and then A apa. These are the things that you need to remember. And then we also talked about the cycle. What is one cycle for a simple harmonic motion? It has to go as it goes through four amplitudes. One, two, three, four. Dia kena patah balik to its initial position. If this is your initial position, it has to go back to its initial position. Now, you're going to tell me, you're going to ask me, doctor, kan dia pergi sini, lepas tu dia patah balik, kan the initial position? Tak, tak boleh. Dia kena, dia kena empat amplitude. Wajib eh. So, kena take note of that. You Go from here to this guy, it's not one cycle because it can go over here. This is not one cycle. This is like half cycle sahaja. So please take note, it has to go through four amplitudes. If we're talking in terms of wave, it has to go back to zero over here. Kalau kita pergi sini, yes, it's go to zero but it's just half a cycle. So it has to complete that cycle and then baru boleh movement yang sama berlaku balik. So this is one cycle. Yang ni adalah 4 amplitude juga. So 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. 4 amplitudes as well. So you need to achieve 4 amplitudes or 4 maximum displacement to achieve 1 cycle for a simple harmonic motion. So back to the spring mass system. For a horizontal system, we had this omega equals to K over M. Kita also belajar V max is square root k over m times a and then we have the general equation which is v equals to k over m square root square root this whole thing a squared minus x squared. Semua kena hafal yang ni. For a simple pendulum you can use the spring mass system substitute the k for for mg over l. So you would get omega as square root g over l. And then from omega, you need to know how to convert it to 2 pi f. So you need to convert it to f and also t. Okay. Okay. That is all for today. The end. Any questions? Do we want to go over this one as well? Mm, this is maximum. This is maximum. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Maximum. Tapi minus a. Boleh lah kejap je eh. Okay, so if this is, this is a simple pendulum, can It goes, this is, we are going to assume this is our maximum A. This is our maximum A as well, max A. And then when it goes to this position, this is X equals to zero. We are assuming this is our equilibrium position. This is equivalent to a spring mass system. Yeah, X equals to zero kat sini. And then this is maximum minus A ataupun minimum A lah. Dia maximum tapi dia negatif. So this is minus A. This is also minus A. Then it goes back to equilibrium position. Goes back to equilibrium position. X equals to zero. This is X equals to zero. And then dia patah balik pergi sini. This is maximum A. This is also A. 
A tu memang maksimum lah. Silap. This is A. Ataupun max X. So habis. Itu sajalah. So if it doesn't achieve the maximum, dia hanya theta sikit saja. So we can just say this is like 0.5A ke contoh. The equivalent for this is 0.5A over here. So it doesn't have to be A0 minus A all the time. Sometimes it's like a, a pecahan of A. Okay, so that is it for today. Any questions before we end class? Today was just like intense, I know. Baru separuh chapter by the way. This chapter is like crazy by the way. But you can do it. You just need time. Okay. Uh, no questions. So I'm going to end it here. Um, I'm going to give you the link for example. About example. So you promised me that you would watch uh, recorded videos, right? So this is the promise that I'm trying to tarik balik. I'm trying to ask you guys to to fulfill this promise, tengok video tu, go over the questions. Semua exercise, it's just exercise. One hour of exercise. I know you guys like to speed up things. So maybe it's just like half an hour, okay? So I'm going to give you guys the link later. Uh, if not, if no questions, have a great rest, rest of the day. And don't forget to have your lunch. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, bye. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. It was a lot. It was a lot, I know. It was a lot for me too. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Bye. Like to submit the Apa? question? Do we have to submit the answers or uh, for you answering the question? Oh, tak, tak. Link to say to the example. Question example. Uh -uh. No, tak payah submit apa-apa. Thank you, Dr. Okay, welcome. Bye-bye.